Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin 2 News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. We start with some breaking news where a murder suspect has been taken into custody after a lengthy standoff with Spokane police. Kremlin 2's Kyle Simchuk was at the scene tonight and has more. Well, after nearly four hours, the SWAT team used their rig to bust down the door of the home this suspect was in. A short time later, around 8 p.m., he came out with his hands up and surrendered. Police would not confirm the man's name. The SWAT team, however, kept yelling over the loudspeaker for Henry Ziegler to come out with his hands up. Take a listen. Henry Ziegler, this is Spokane Police Department. You are under arrest. Surrender peacefully. Our force will be used against you to include chemical munitions and the canine. Police say the man is a suspect in a deadly shooting that happened Sunday in Spokane. The sergeant here said he was unable to go into detail, but that more information will be released soon. Now, police got a tip that the murder suspect was in East Central Spokane this afternoon. Officers found him outside a house near 7th and Lee and say the man ran back inside around 430 and refused to come out. Hours later, the SWAT team fired some loud, non-lethal noise distraction devices. A search warrant was applied for and granted, uh, so we, um, the suspect had actually barricaded himself in the home, so we were able to um, talk him out eventually. The SWAT team Bearcat drove onto the property with a metal arm extended to bust down the door. The suspect came out a short time later and we saw him in handcuffs getting searched. Police have cleared the scene, leaving us with a lot of questions. We want to know what happened Sunday during that deadly shooting. Uh, police tell us that information will be available soon. Reporting in East Central Spokane tonight, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. All right, let's talk weather now because it is nearly December, just an hour away from December 1st, in fact, and we are seeing record high temperatures in the 50s, even 60s in some areas. Let's get out to Cody Proctor in the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. And Cody, when is it finally going to start to cool down and feel like the December? I mean, we'll get a better sense of that as we head towards the weekend. I mean, right now I've been standing out here in the wind. It feels chilly enough as it is, but our temperatures are 48 degrees right now at the Spokane Airport. We are seeing some wind speeds of about eight miles per hour coming out of the south. That is making it feel a little bit cooler right now. To give you an idea of just how warm it was for today, we saw a high about 52 degrees. Our average 37, so you can see how out of the norm this is for us for this time of year. And tomorrow could continue to get even warmer. Still mild right now, just after 11 o'clock across the region, mostly in the 40s. We're seeing 46 right now in Pullman, 48 in Spokane, and 50 right now for Coeur d'Alene. We're our feels like temperatures a little bit less than that, so it is feeling pretty chilly outside right now. Breezy to gusty winds across parts of our region. We can continue to see those gusts overnight into our early morning hours, so keep a close eye on that trash can just in case. And for tomorrow, we could really see some of our warmest temperatures nearly record breaking. Eventually, we'll start to cool down a bit more into those 40s for the weekend, but that's still warm for this time of year. I'll throw it back to you, Mark. All right, Cody, thank you very much. Our ongoing series Boomtown examines the growth happening in our region and today was a big step forward for the new $31 million downtown stadium. That stadium will serve Spokane Public Schools and a minor league soccer team. Well, today officials from Spokane schools, elected officials and students stuck shovels in the dirt to mark the occasion. The new stadium has faced some controversy. Some parents wanted the school district to rebuild the aging Joe Albee Stadium in northwest Spokane. However, school board president Jarrell Haynes says the downtown location will better serve students and the community. Our entire community was basically split down in the middle. And so when the conversation came back up last year before myself and the school board, we had to ask ourselves what was the best approach to take when it, we decided that this was the right choice to make because our students benefited the most from building the stadium here in the center of downtown. There still is some tension behind the scenes. USL Spokane played a major role in getting the downtown location secured, and they plan to bring a pro soccer team to Spokane. Well, now Brett Sports, the company that owns the Spokane Chiefs and the Indians, has put in a bid for their own team. The Public Facilities District, which will co-manage the stadium, will ultimately make a decision in mid-December. We'll keep you posted on that one. All right, looking ahead to tomorrow morning, drivers who use westbound I-90 between Liberty Lake and Spokane Valley should plan for additional time in the morning. The Washington Department of Transportation will be conducting rolling shutdowns as crews help create the new Kramer Parkway undercrossing. The rolling shutdowns will be roughly 15 to 20 minutes long. They could end up impacting your morning commute.
At least three students are dead. Eight others are hurt after a school shooting in Oxford, Michigan today. Police say the suspect, a 15 year old sophomore, opened fire inside the high school early this morning. Three of the victims have been identified as 16 year old Tate Meyer, 14 year old Hannah St. Julian and 17 year old Madison Baldwin. Police confirmed the gun had been bought by the 15 year old's father four days prior and that all the fatalities were students. At least eight others, including a teacher, were hurt in the shooting. Police arrested the 15 year old suspect at the school within five minutes of arriving. They said they recovered a semi automatic handgun with several magazines, but police say that suspect refused to say how he got the gun in the school. Opening arguments in the murder trial against a former Pasco police officer accused of killing a Spokane woman nearly 35 years ago got underway today. Richard Aguirre faces first degree murder for the killing of 27 year old Ruby Das back in 1986. Aguirre was previously charged with her murder in 2015, but the case was dismissed in 2017 due to a lack of evidence. Well, the prosecutor told the jury the labs at the time did not get a DNA match from the condom found at the scene. However, another lab ran that DNA again and it did match with Aguirre. The suspect's intent defense attorney, meantime, says he can prove Aguirre was not even in the country at the time of the murder. You will see an exhibit that says Richard Aguirre was in Korea at the time of Miss Doss's death a certified copy of military records. The prosecutor later presented various photos and videos taken at the scene of items, including a steak knife, an earring, and a condom where the victim's body was found. Protesters gathered outside of Finch Elementary School in Spokane this afternoon. This comes just a week after the school principal and other staff members were escorted out of the school after refusing to wear masks. Graham 2's Ian Smay was at the protest earlier today and has more on what those protesters want to achieve. Protesters started to gather at about 2.45 this afternoon, which is right around the time school gets out here at Finch Elementary. The group started with about two dozen people, but quickly grew to 60 or 70 people at its biggest point, including incoming Spokane City Council member Jonathan Bingle. The last of the protesters did leave at about 4.15 this evening. Many of the protesters were holding signs saying things such as masks should be a choice or unmasked children. A lot of people who drove by honked in response to a man holding a sign saying honk for freedom. And this comes a week after the school's principal, Shane O'Doherty and other staff members were escorted out for refusing to wear masks. O'Doherty said he was peacefully protesting against the mandate because he believes it hurts children's social and emotional well-beings. Those out here today said they were showing support for the principal. Um, we're out here today because I have three students that attend Finch and I am very proud of the staff that walked out for not wearing a mask. I, they have my total support. We just want to let people know that, um, number one, we're thankful for our freedom. We support freedom of choice and we support this principal who had the courage to stand up to Governor Inslee and the mask mandate and uh, we want him to know that. <laughs> The protest lasted about two hours in total, and there wasn't a group of counter protesters here at Finch in response. The protest remained peaceful, other than one parent in support of the mandate having a heated argument with the protesters. It ended peacefully, and we have video of that confrontation. This is horrible that you are doing this in front of my child, in front of all of your children. You guys are in trouble. This is my school. Again, that did end peacefully. I also spoke with Kelly Hawkins of the Spokane Regional Health District earlier. She said CDC studies have shown that schools without mask mandates are three times more likely to have a COVID outbreak. She said the district's goal in providing guidance on masks is to keep kids in school. Ultimately, the goal of the health district as well as in, in our purpose of working so closely with the schools is to get kids in school and to keep them being able to continue learning while in person school. We just want to reiterate that the mask mandate was handed down by Governor Jay Inslee. It was not a decision made by the Spokane Public Schools District. Reporting in Northwest Spokane, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. After hours of debate, a panel of U.S. health advisors narrowly backed the Merck COVID-19 treatment pill. Their decision likely sets the stage for authorization of the first drug Americans can take at home to treat the coronavirus. A Food and Drug Administration panel voted 13 to 10 that the drug's benefits outweigh its risks, including potential birth defects if used during pregnancy. 
The group's vote spe specifically rather backed the drug for adults with mild to moderate COVID-19 who face the greatest risks, including those with conditions like obesity, asthma and old age. The pill is already authorized in the UK. Coming up after the break, we are sharing one aspiring boxer's inspiring journey, a badly broken leg, a journey to America, and several surgeries later, he is chasing his dreams.